Hey guys, let me know what you think by liking and commenting, and it really helps me and this channel out when you subscribe, so please click that button. Thanks a bunch! All right, everyone, today's episode is brought to you by Super Smooth Hobby Lubricants. Super Smooth Hobby Lubricants are 100% synthetic, and they come in medium oil versions, light oil, and PTFE or Teflon grease in this handy tube. These are very recent and modern formulations. The company that actually manufactures the oil and grease for Super Smooth is a very, very well known company, and Super Smooth worked with their chemists to make sure that these would fulfill the needs of modern hobbyists. These formulas are specifically designed not to gum up, and they're designed also not to attract any kind of grease or dirt or dust. So remember Super Smooth, it's slicker than smooth. All right, everybody, uh, today I've got a really interesting model for you. It is by Accurate Scale of the United Kingdom and it is a class 55 Deltic dual prime mover locomotive. There were quite a few of these to choose from, I, uh, just a bunch of different liveries and whatnot, but this one actually replaces a Lima version of this exact same locomotive that I already had. Didn't like the Lima one, the gear noise was just crazy and I didn't want to go through and do all these modifications. So I found this one and I replaced it. I've never owned a locomotive from Acura Scale before, so I thought this would be a pretty good way to try them out. They have this really nice booklet in here. Very, very nice, in fact. I really like it when they include things like this. I'm not going to read it all right now, but certainly if you want to learn a lot more about this really interesting and <laughs> it's a historical locomotive. And if you ever have a chance to look into this Deltic engine, do. It's a really bizarre design. Really, really bizarre design. Um, I love it though. Wish I could see one in real life. Maybe I'll get that chance here one of these days. All right, well, I'm, I won't go through all of this. If you buy one of these, it could be yours. I guess if you really want to scan this, let me know and I can do that. Looks like it's got a bunch of different options here for the train number, for the number boards. Oh, yeah, it does. If you, depending on which one you want to represent, take your pick. But I don't think I have to worry about this one because I think this one's set. And here it is, the Gordon Highlander in this purple livery from Porterbrook. I don't really understand a whole lot about Porter. It's a private leasing company, it looks like. It looks like they often lease their stuff for freight. Ah, those are interesting. I never install these, but I, I don't want to actually take a chance on messing up the shell by you know, having some sort of glue accident, so I never installed them. Those will never be installed. So let's just go ahead and go to the locomotive itself here. Let's see if we can figure out how to get this open. Where, where are we? Okay. And there you have it. Uh, you know, I know purple in locomotive is one of those kind of love it or hate it type of things. I absolutely love it. Purple and pink are kind of my thing, and certainly I'm not going to find too many locomotives in pink. But purple, there. this is a great example of one. Now look at that. They've done a really wonderful job. A lot of my exposure to 00 scale has been through Hornby, and there's something that's always sort of bastardized looking to me about Hornby locomotives. They look very toy-like. They don't look very serious, but this, on the other hand, looks very real. Huh, I wonder what that is. I'm not sure what that is, but I'm not sure if that's supposed to move around like that. Maybe somebody can tell me. It sort of doesn't look like it, but maybe it does. They got weird stuff in England. That doesn't make sense to me, but it makes sense. Sprung buffers, it's really nice. It's a nice touch. So I know Sam from Sam's Train should be pretty happy about that. Well, it's really lovely one thing i noticed of course that you can't notice is things pretty hefty pretty freaking hefty locomotive so uh we'll put it on the scale here in a little bit and see what it's really got going but wow definitely is chunky well it's obvious that they took a lot of time and put a lot of care into this locomotive and especially for the price point i'm just i'm not sure how they pulled it off but they managed to somehow you can see the cool details up front, the porter where everything's crisp and clean, little tiny rivets everywhere, just like I assume it is in real life. Uh, boy, I'm actually surprised the, the paint is very sharp, very nice looking. I mean, look at the striping here that's coming along with the roof, the separately applied fans. I love that kind of thing. They had enough room to make these fans work, but I guess they're not quite there yet and it would have uh, driven the price up substantially. All right, these are very, ah, it's nice they even have 
the little maker's uh, imprints on the whatever those caps are. Very, very nicely thought out. Walking around, you know, got great grab irons. It looks like the um, the actual door handle there is molded in, not separate, but it is separately painted, so still a really nice touch. Look around these windows, and you can see that obviously they care. You can even see the little rivets in there. I'm sure if I got a little bit closer, I got a magnifying lens or glass on that, I could actually read what is on that little plate. Oh, I just love it. I love these. I love this type of care. You can look in here. There's even the little warning labels on the electrical boxes. The seats are different colors, which is something I think a lot of manufacturers really drop the ball on. It's not making interior de details just as nice as the exterior details. You can see the engines inside of the locomotive. Now, these grills aren't see-through. I think that would have been a, a little bit more of a nice touch as to actually have them, but of course it would have raised the price quite a bit. Going around, I'm not, not sure if that's overspray or some sort of detritus that got spread around in there. So I'm not gonna mark it down too much for that, but I'm, I'm not sure what's going on there, what's sort of attached to the window. Look down here at the fuel tanks, well, just uh, a lot of these don't look separately applied, but they are separately painted, which, boy, they did a nice job. Look at the dial here. You can actually, well, this should theoretically have enough gas in it to run. I, I shouldn't even need to pump electricity into this, I guess. Looks like it's ready to go. If we look at the interior of the shell here, we can see that it's going to have both a cab light and an engine room light. In fact, uh, one for each side. Wow, very, very nice. They really considered this well. Like I said, the only thing I think that would have been even more neat is to have operating fans. But they're probably not quite there yet, and, and that probably would have raised the price of this locomotive substantially, but that's the kind of thing that will happen more in the future. All right, let's go ahead and weigh this out and figure out if I'm a liar or not about how heavy this is. 29.2. Well, let's go ahead and pull this and make sure that it really is. Uh, yep, okay, so... Uh, for everybody else, that's a one pound, 13 ounces, just shy, just a little bit around what, to one and three quarters pounds and 828 grams for everybody else in the rest of the world. So fairly hefty locomotive. It should pull pretty well. One of the things I did purchase were these separate Delta Crew guys. And let's take a look at them here. They come in this really nice uh, jewelry box, this earring box type thing, and they're actually made in the UK. So I think it's nice that they made characters that actually go in there and modeled them on real people. So let's open this thing here and take a look at these characters. Let's get them out of here. There, there they are. Okay, taking a look at them, they look, well, they look kind of gummy. I mean, they're, they're cool and everything, don't get me wrong, but let's pop these out of here real quick and take a, hmm, they've, they have, uh, I don't know, it looks like they've not super crisp. I mean, it's a bit of a disappointment after how nice the exterior was. And is it me or do they have hepatitis or something like that? Or maybe, you know what they really remind me of? Well, I tried to be as non-discriminatory as possible, so there, I guess there's nothing wrong with a zombie crew running the Deltic, so as long as they do their job, that's, I guess that's all we really care about, although, yeah, they are a bit of a letdown there, depending on the light, I, they, they get even worse, I mean, they could have done a little bit better job on this, I wonder if they're 3D resin printed, and then maybe they're, I don't know, they look like they're painted all right, but they certainly don't look like they do in the actual advertisement. But after they're plopped in there, they don't look too bad, and I, you're not gonna be able to see a whole lot of them anyway from the window, so I guess it's not going to be a problem. All right, to take the shell off, you just simply spread it, but you do have to watch out for the truck retention chain, so you wanna be a little bit careful about that. And after popping it open, you can see they've done a really, really nice job here. They have done a great job 
of putting all these components in here in such a way when it's just really professional and you can see the lock sound decoder in there here's some more of the interior details that you're not able to see through the windows but the fact that they're in here is really impressive really nice job overall no doubt about it again it, it's clear that they strove for a type of quality that maybe we just don't see coming out in OO scale quite a bit and I, I hope they keep it up and I think they'll gain quite a following um, if they continue to put this much work into their locomotives one of the things I found to be less than ideal on this model are the truck retention chains I really like these I think it's a really good idea I've got a few other models that have these particularly brass models but I think there was a little bit of a failure in the execution here. Let me explain. The way they have these connected to the chassis is here, and that's probably the way it's done in real life. But what that means is if you take off the shell, you have to take off each of these chains, and you have to do it very carefully. But what I think they should have done is actually made the shell end here and made the area where the chain goes on part of the chassis. By doing that, they could have made it so that you could remove the shell safely without breaking the chains. And as much as these chains are kind of interesting, I think I'm actually just going to take them off. Well, on to the wheels. Speaking of the trucks, uh, it looks like they're all engaged pretty well. I went through each of these with the my handy dandy gauge here and everything seemed to work out just fine. So you shouldn't have any problems there. All right, let's go ahead and run through the sounds, particularly the ones that really count here.
All right, let's show you the light functions. There are quite a few on here, and uh, yeah, they're all pretty cool. All right, as is the case with most uh, higher end models now, this one comes in with the built-in capacitor. So let's see how long it will last you. All right, a buck 20 isn't great, but it should last you for uh, just bad points or bad sections of track. Now let's do a low speed motion test. And this is one area this model seriously has some problems. These are factory settings, but it took over five clicks to get this thing going. When it did get going, it's a little herky-jerky, and this has been run in for at least an hour, so not the greatest low-speed control. And part of it, I think this thing has a really high top speed, and I think, unfortunately, they probably could have sacrificed that top end speed with gearing to make this smoother. Again, in backwards, it takes about five clicks to get this thing going. Yes, I can fix that through CV values, but still, it's a little bit jerky, and that still seems to be more a matter of gearing than anything else. I can try to futz with some of the other CV values to see if this smooths out, but overall, I think I'm not the only one who's found that this model is a little bit lacking in the low speed department. Again, not hideous, but I think this is one area that they could probably have some improvement in the future. After some work with uh, CV2, which controls this low speed, I think I got it working a little bit better, and uh, but still I had to crank it up a little bit more than I like. And this isn't a bad slow speed, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not exactly a super crawl, but it's a decent crawl. So if you, per if you get this, pretty much expect that you're gonna have to go in and, and muck with CV2 in order to get this to run a bit smoother. I suppose I could go in and mess with the CV50 range something somewhere and get this to be a little bit better, but uh, overall, I don't really want to do that, and having it do a super crawl isn't important enough to me to really warrant that. So here it is. I, I th Yeah, I think just running two up a little bit more made it a little bit better and a little bit more tolerable, and should smooth out with a load a little bit, I think. So I, I guess it's in better shape now. Here's the reason why. Here's the top speed on this thing. It's really fast. And again, I think if they would have just sacrificed some of this top end speed and changed the gearing a little bit so that the motor could run a little bit faster, which would propel it a little slower, I think it would have been better. Okay, as far as the consist for this thing, once again, I sort of purchased the consist before I actually had the locomotive and I've decided to put it with these Golden Arrow. I don't know anything about the Golden Arrow as a train. I looked it up a little bit. Neat, keen, it's interesting. I doubt that this locomotive actually pulled it, but I figured these would be really good. I mean, they, they would look really good behind it. I would turn this effectively into an excursion train I think every single one of these is the same. I think they're all numbered the same. So I'm not sure. I picked them up cheap and they look good. So that pretty much it satisfies everything. And so yeah, they'll, I think they'll look good and they'll do really well to be pulled behind this thing. One major flaw with these cars, however, is that the wheels are severely out of gauge and they're all, I mean, we're talking severely, severely. I don't know if this is some weird Hornby thing, if they had their own track or whatever, but they were so severely out of gauge that they just hopped over 
Uh, I mean, you could see here they're just hopping over the guard on the points, and they, they hop so bad, they actually come off of the track, as you can see right there. It's, it's horrible. I mean, it's a gruesome sight to see this kind of <laughs> accident. So I had to go looking for other wheels. And I did have some others, but I'm, I'm not sure if they're the right. In fact, let's put this way. I was doing this so quickly, I didn't even care. I had these Hornbees sitting around. They're 14.1 millimeter. Didn't even bother to go upstairs and get them micrometered to see if these are the correct. Just something needed to change. I needed to get something in there so that these things wouldn't derail every single time they went through my points. So who knows? I also leached a bunch off of other cars and ran those. So finally I got them working. Okay, as I was running this around my track, I noticed I was having a problem with this locomotive and it has to do with the length of the bogies. And if you look, this is my New Haven EP5, which has some of the longest, has one of the longest power trucks of any locomotive that I have. Well, if you look, this Deltix truck is even longer. Now, one problem that my EP5 here um, had was that the front truck in particular was starting to derail. In fact, the front truck, it would be the front wheel of the front truck was starting to derail on some of my curves. It actually doesn't work on both directions on my track. It only works in one direction. Had to run it one way, and that's the only way it wouldn't derail. Now, this wasn't the EP5's fault per se. It's because my track undulates quite a bit. And what would happen is when it's coming around to turn, the basically the track would fall away from the front wheel. And because that pretty much put the middle and the rear wheel in charge and it would derail the front wheel. And I've, I've had that before, but I've kind of worked on my track. Well, this Deltic is going to make me have to work on my track a little bit more because effectively this derailing happened all the time with this thing. Here's what it looked like, just happened all the time. And it became pretty frustrating as you can see here, I'm even just trying to take a, a video of it coming down the track, you can see the front truck is already derailed. And there was very little I could do about it. I can see when it's happening, but without some Pretty severe track work, there's just nothing I can do about it. Or is there? Yep, just like the EP5. If I flip it around, what do you know? It works just fine. Okay, so there you have it. It's a, yeah, it should be a pretty healthy review of this. Really quality piece, no doubt about it. Um, it's obvious they put some time and care into this. It's not a perfect piece. Low speed, um, low speed isn't so great. Also the chains, they probably should do something about that. Uh, I think they, like I said, should have attached those to the chassis. The sounds are excellent. I'm gonna go ahead and, and figure that they recorded it from a real Deltic of which there are still at least a few still running. So it should sound pretty authentic and it sounds great. I don't know how to describe it, but it has a nice low rumble to it. That's really pleasant. It makes a really nice companion piece to my class 67 here pulling, it's a Pullman. So I, I thought they would go along quite well together. And I think they do. In fact, this is the 67 is probably one of the few Hornby models that I really like. So as always, you know, I'd love to hear your comments. Uh, anything you have to say about this? I, I want to know what you think. Do you have one of these? Do you want one of these? I don't know how many are around. I know they had a little bit left, um, but yeah. So please like and uh, comment. Those things really help me out. And if you really want to do something that's free that helps me out a lot, please subscribe and hit the bell. Like usual, I hope you stay safe. Take care. Have a good time out there. And please, happy model railroading if you are a model railroader. Talk to you later. See you.